is your host, Tim Newton. The Purdue Boilermakers ran their winning streak to four games last Saturday night with a thrilling 43-37 win over Nebraska before a sellout crowd at ross Aid Stadium. Boilermakers now at 5-2 and two overall, 3-1 and one in the Big Ten West. And they have their final game before the bye this week, taking on the Wisconsin Badgers at Camp Randall Stadium on Saturday for a 3.30 Eastern time kickoff. Good evening, everybody. It is the Jeff Brom Show. We're live at Walk-Ons in the Purdue Memorial Union. We'll have the head coach with us until the top of the hour. You can get questions in for the coach at 888-246-2678. We're also on Facebook on the Purdue Athletic site. Let us know where you're watching from and uh, if you have any questions for the coach. We're also on Twitter today on the Purdue football site. In addition to Coach Brown, we'll be hearing a little bit later on in the show from Jack Sullivan, the high-flying defensive end for the Boilermakers, and the Big Ten Freshman of the Week, Devin Mockaby, will join us later as well. It is the Jeff Brown Show, presented by the Rorman Automotive Group. We'll have more on this after this on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. Great story, walk-on running back. He starts to O'Connell's right. And here is Maccabee, the man known as Crazy Legs. Good start for Maccabee. Lowers that helmet and powers his way across the 40. Second drive from the 20. O'Connell will roll, checks it down. There's Maccabee, cuts back. Maccabee slips away. Here he goes. And Maccabee finally brought down across the 35 yard line. You know, flipped his commitment to play here at Purdue, and that was his dream all along was to be here. And he's a walk on and having a great season. Now it takes the toss. More room for Maccabee across midfield, and then his shoulder down hard at the 45 yard line. Tonight, third and goal, empty backfield, O'Connell. Over the middle, zips it towards the back of the end zone. That's caught for a touchdown by T.J. Sheffield. The guy that can get to him is on the front side, and he beats that. Balls out, Thompson pressured, and inside the 15-yard line, and it's recovered by Nebraska. It usually translates in the pocket. New two out of two on third down. This is third and 12. They go back to oh. Jones, a back shoulder catch. Thompson pressured, and... O'Connell on the slant, throws a dart, Jones keeps his feet, Jones to the end zone, touchdown Purdue. Three timeouts, 5.41 to go until halftime. They fake it to Grant, Thompson rolling, now throwing and it's intercepted. It's picked off on the return, Clyde Washington. It's Maccabee right side, Maccabee touch important third down here and it's caught Sheffield Sheffield spins free Sheffield dives touchdown Purdue <laughs> O'Connell will throw and it's oh, caught by Jones touchdown Purdue what a pass I'm sure we're live at walk-ons in the Purdue Memorial Union where it's always game day with a taste of Louisiana 2022 Purdue football season is presented by Purdue Global. Purdue Global is Purdue's accredited and affordable online solution for working adults. Persistence pays off at Purdue Global. And I guess persistence, Jeff, is the key word. I saw earlier today on a national uh, website somewhere that they listed the 10 most exciting teams in college football right now, and the Boilermakers are right in the middle of it. Probably too exciting for you at times with these games going on to the wire, but it has been an awfully fun season so far. Well, it's been a competitive journey to this point, and uh, I think we've had to fight and scratch for every win we've gotten. And, um, you know, that's just kind of how the season's going to be. But uh, got to give our team a lot of credit. Uh, they play hard. They want to win. Uh, they stay together. Uh, nothing's ever been perfect in one of our games. But uh, I think they feed off of each other and understand that at some point, if you just stick with it, uh, good things can happen. So, uh, once again, fan turnout was outstanding into the game, uh, just just unbelievable, and, and that was a big factor. So we needed everything we could to, to figure out a way to pull out a win, and, and, and luckily we did. Well, you know, the nice thing is you're playing complimentary football right now. The last two weeks in those road games, a couple of times your defense really had to pull the offense through, and Saturday the offense returned the favor, and they bailed the defense out a few times. Without question, that's kind of what we had to do. It wasn't one of our better special teams games either. So I just think, uh, you know, every week you go back to the drawing board and you try to fix the mistakes and make the corrections and hope that at some point you can kind of put it all together. But uh, in reality, you know, you're playing good football teams and they're do trying to do the same thing. So to think that you're going to dominate the entire time, it's not going to happen. It's just we're going to try to 
uh, you know, do better than they do fit more than 50% of the time. And I think if you do that, you, you have a chance. And uh, But, you know, we've got a lot of tough football games coming up, and uh, we know it's going to take a lot of hard work each week to find a way to win. You know, if you look at the Big Ten this year in general, and specifically the Big Ten West, it seems like all these games are going down to the wire. And I think you've got in this conference right now, Ohio State and Michigan are on their own planet. Everybody else is kind of in that jumble. And you, you have to expect, as we look at these last five games, that they're all going to be nail biters. That's the way it looks, and uh, I agree with you. You know, there's a couple, uh, you know, dominant teams that really are just loaded with talent and playing at a very, very elite level, and then everyone else. Uh, I don't think there's really any any weak links at all. Every everyone else is playing competitive football every week. Uh, anybody can beat any team on any given day. You got to just you know put your head down and go to work uh, during the week and understand what it's going to take to win, and then. Come game day, uh, you know, we tell our guys, hey, Saturday morning, you got to be able to look in the mirror and say, man, I've, I've given everything I got to prepare. And then you go out on the field and you get cut loose. And uh, once again, give everything you got. Stay in the moment, don't worry about the score, and, and hope in the end you win. And that's just, uh, you know, college football, you got to be, you know, tough enough uh, to withstand uh, some blows here and there, a couple losses here and there that could ha happen, a couple bad days at the office. But, uh, you still strive for perfection and to do you know something special, and I just think our guys are working hard right now. You mentioned earlier on that Devin Mockaby will be joining us later. He got his first start on Saturday night, and I think he to say he was up to the challenge is probably an understatement. 30 carries, 178 yards, and he's a guy that continues to amaze, uh, taking the hits in the Big Ten that he's taking, and, and he was looked as fresh in the fourth quarter as he did in the first. Well, it was a big day for Devin. We were really proud of him. Uh, he came through for us. Uh, he works really hard. You know, he got banged up in the game, took a lot of hits and shots. But like you said, he bounces off of them, continues to run hard. He's one of those guys that while he's nicked up this week, he wants to practice. He's done as much as he could. Um, I mean, he's just tough, and he's out to prove himself, and he's hungry. And you just love to coach those type of guys. And I know our fans love to watch uh, you know, him play because he – uh, really gives it everything he's got. And you're going to be without Dylan Downing, it looks like, another week, so he'll get a lot of carries. Kobe Lewis has to be ready, and we've seen Tyrone Tracy lined up in the backfield a few times as well. Yeah, all of them got to be up and ready to go, and, uh, you know, against the team we're playing, we're going to have to, you know, be able to run the ball and take some pressure off the passing game and, and, and gain some yards that way. But I think our guys are working hard, and we're trying hard to, you know, piece it all together to put the best plan out there for those guys to go out and run for some yards. Andrew Sawinski is another guy that I think has come out of nowhere, a kid from Chittard High School. He's uh, one of five kids, and he's the fifth kid to go to Purdue. All, five, or all four of his siblings have been at Purdue. His dad is a pharmacy professor, and all he does is do the right things. He catches the ball, and he runs the right routes. Well, he's another one that you couldn't be prouder of uh, the way this guy works and how he plays, and he's earned every ounce of playing time he's gotten to this point. Uh, he understands our offense. He works extremely hard in practice. He doesn't miss a day. Uh, he goes hard. Uh, and uh, without question, we're feeling more comfortable putting him in. Uh, Aiden's feeling very comfortable throwing him the ball. And I think he's uh, going to continue to improve and, and be a force for us. So it's, it's great to have young men on the team like that, that uh, Purdue really means something to them. Uh, and they want to you know, work their rear end off to, to do a great job, and he's definitely done that. All right, we'll take a quick time out. This is the Jeff Brom Show presented by the Roman Automotive Group on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. Cole Heed blocked at the net. Alonzo Corcellas blocked at the net again. So is going to get it over. Hudson for the game. Survives in Bloomington. A really impressive performance by her and the Boilermakers tonight. Down two sets to one, able to come back and get the win. Purdue got to start it off with this great look by Dunaway. Takes it on her left. It's a great job of keeping that on frame. A corner kick goal for Purdue. Warte pounces on that second ball to find the equalizer. That's enough for Purdue to keep the golden boot in West Lafayette. Our Boilermakers have always been what unite us. To this hallowed field, we return each fall to be a part of something special. We've seen legends born and moments etched in time. Up 
away, Coleman football, and got it! Beasley rushes free for the Purdue touchdown! It's pandemonium, coach, hope for you! Hope we have a whole lot more of these. It's a great win for Purdue. For nearly a century, ross Stadium has been the home of Purdue football. As we forge ahead, we have a rare opportunity to fortify the legacy of future generations of faithful Boilermakers. Together, we will guarantee the passion you have for the old golden black. We'll endure it for years to come. Let the carnage and the chaos continue. How about the Boilermakers? Boiler up, friends. The time is now. Automotive Group is supporting your Boilermakers as the presenting sponsor of the Jeff Brown Show and proud partner of Purdue Athletics, Worman Automotive Group, Boiler Up and Hammer Down. Just a reminder, since there's a game this week, but no game next week, no show next week, so our next Jeff Brown Show will be two weeks from tonight. Actually, between now and then, we'll have our first Matt Painter show right here from Walk-Ons, and that'll be at uh, Halloween night starting at 6.05. Uh, looking at Facebook tonight, we want to say hello. Mike from Raleigh, North Carolina. Scott's in Laguna Beach. Uh, John has a question. It's a question I've gotten from other people, so we'll, we'll just bring it out here. Uh, the chances that Devin Mockaby gets put on scholarship in the spring. You don't have anything for him right now, but I have a feeling something may be available at the end of the season. Yeah, I know that question's been lingering out there. Uh, you know, it's not as easy as just to reward everybody a scholarship immediately. You know, right now there's an 85 limit. We were at the limit this semester, but once the semester's over, you know, really both him and Dylan Dowling have, have proven uh, that uh, they're very capable Big Ten running backs that uh, if they continue to work, I think can really help us and do good things. So without question, we'll take both care of both those young men, uh, you know, when we can. All right. Uh, Brent from 12 Mile, Indiana says, hello. John has a question here. It says that now that Aiden O'Connell is a married man, have you adjusted your sidelines discussions with him during TV games because his wife is likely viewing? <laughs> well, I know I've got to be careful of, of both of those. You know what? I, I've tried to uh, be as positive as I can and uh, pick my moments just to kind of make sure he's motivated and he's ready to go and he's getting tough. You know, you know playing quarterback, uh, it's cerebral, uh, but you have to be tough. You have to be able to withstand hits. You have to be able to withstand adversity. Sometimes... Uh, you know, you, you want your guy uh, who's playing that position to, you know, understand how tough you got to be uh, during a game. And I just think uh, it's important that as coaches we have the right balance of making sure we, we let our guys play and go cut it loose and do what they want and uh, pat them on the back when they're doing well. But I think we do have to, you know, point out some things that we see that uh, maybe they didn't that can help them during the game. But without question, uh, you know, Aiden uh, has strong faith. Um, his wife's a big part of it. His family are really good people. And, and, yes, I need to be on my best behavior. Well, J.L. Johnson, a former student athlete here at Purdue, played volleyball. I'm sure she had her share of coaching with Dave Shondell over the years, too. So she understands the way this thing works. They're both Division One athletes. They understand the sport. <laughs> Speaking of Aiden O'Connell, we were talking during the first commercial break. He made some throws on Saturday night, and one in particular. And we had a great view from it up in the press box. The touchdown pass he threw to Charlie Jones on the left pylon. There couldn't have been a, a, a gap of more than two feet for him to fit that ball in. It was an unbelievable throw for a two-yard touchdown pass. Well, yeah, you're very uh, correct on that. I think that, uh, you know, Aiden really played well, uh, did some really good things. And then, you know, in the fourth quarter and even in the third quarter, you know, he did make five or six throws that, uh, in my opinion, were off the charts. Uh, the anticipation, the accuracy, the velocity, the ability to put it in tight windows, uh, is not easy to do, and uh, that's one of his strengths without question, and uh, he was really sharp on those. We also know he's never going to be mistaken for Fran Tarkenton in terms of scrambling around, but he made a huge play for you on a fourth down. You know, both of your receivers, Payne Durham and Charlie Jones, looked like they got tackled on the play, and they went down, and he had nobody to throw it to. He had to pick up a big first down, and he did. Without question, he did. Uh, he really... You know, sucked it up and found a way to help us get the win. I just think he really wants to win. He's a great teammate. We had some crossing routes called to get some guys open. Uh, they peeled their blitzer on the edge to go guard the running back, so it kind of gave him an opening. And then, like you said, there were two guys that were tackled. Of course, you know, the referees didn't think they were, I guess. I guess they, I guess they didn't see that. Go back I don't, and I don't, watch I don't know, the replay, everybody. You know, everyone else saw it, but uh, they got tackled, and uh, he had to run to get the first yeah. down. And uh, we had two critical – 
fourth down conversions in the fourth quarter that we had to have, in my opinion, to help us win. And uh, he was a huge part of it. Yeah, you know, I assume, and, and I think we we knew that there were some NFL teams that were interested in him at the end of the last season. They thought he should come back maybe for another year. But I have to believe the interest is out there. He's a guy that should be playing on Sundays or on a roster somewhere Sundays next season. Well, I think he's played a lot of football. He's been in a, a passing system against uh, great opponents every week in the Big Ten in our bowl game, uh, non-conference schedule. We played, you know, the best of the best, and uh, he's done a really good job. So I know that uh, each team is looking for different things, you know, and, and you know, I can't predict it, but, uh, you know, he definitely has a, a lot of talent, uh, the work ethic, the desire, and uh, he's got great film. So, of course, we hope the best for him. Uh, let's flip over, Jeff, quickly to the other side of the field. And uh, not the greatest night the secondary has had, and it was the big play. And we really haven't seen Purdue give up a lot of big plays. You've had a chance to go back and dissect everything. Was there a particular thing, or was it something different on all those plays? Well, it was not our, our best day on the field. And, uh, you know, our guys work hard. Uh, I'm proud of the effort they gave. But we got beat uh, over the top on, on a lot of pass plays. And I think uh, – it was a good wake-up call for us. Um, everybody was at fault, without question. We were too flat-footed at safety, and we allowed guys to run by us, and maybe our eyes were in the backfield. We were trying to cheat on in cuts or shorter throws and didn't understand that you got to protect the deep ball first. And the same thing at the corner position. Uh, we we got to honor you know, the deep ball and be able to react to the things underneath. And, yeah, you want to have tight coverage, but you got to be smart, and the farther away they are from you, you got to give them a little bit of cushion and then uh, we got to just make the calls correctly and, and teach it correctly during the week so that we're on top of that and we're making sure that happens. So we got beat plenty of times over the top. It was, uh, you know, not our best day. It's definitely fixable. It's correctable. Uh, but you got to you got to work on it and you got to point it out and you can't be scared to say, well, that you know, it, it, it's an accident. No, it's what an accident. You know, they they ran by us and they got open and some of them weren't contested. So that that can't happen. But I know our guys are going to work hard this week because they're they got experience and they understand that uh, that's a very important part. And in order to win against Wisconsin, these teams coming up, we, we have to play uh, at a high level in all three segments. All right, we'll come back here in two minutes. It's the Jeff Brom Show presented by Rorman Automotive Group on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. It's getting louder as we get to tip off. Let's rock and roll. Listen to this boy with Trevor. They go with Wall the back to Arena. It is better than Fog Allen. It is better than Cameron. One of the toughest places in the Big Ten to come get a victory. You ask any player who's played here. Uh, Mackey is the loudest gym I've ever been in. Really, this is ridiculous. Like, you just, you can't hear anything. Mackey Arena, it's, it's literally the loudest place I've ever been in my life. You know, I'll, I'll take that to the grave. Mackey Arena is the hardest place to play. What can you say about this environment? The intro alone got me off my seat. This place could absolutely blow its top. This is the one venue where they have to have more of a read and react offense. This, this atmosphere is as good as there is in America. Maybe the best I've ever been in rivals anything I've ever seen. And the paint crew on both sides enjoy what should be the best atmosphere you will see. Mona Lisa, a spot in the sand watching the sunset on the Corona Del Mar and a sold out Holloway Gymnasium, the three most beautiful things in the world. And we get to experience one of them right now. Holloway Gymnasium is one of the most electric places in entire league of NCAA volleyball, so we are so excited to be back. It's always great to see the pride that the Boilermakers bring to the gym and all the support that we get. Oh, double down. This entire Holloway gym right now doubling down and raving. Ellis the swing and the kill. Emma Ellis coming alive late in set number five. He's taking big swings right now, not afraid of this moment. The crowd really loves it. Getting the keys out. Get off. Who does it? They outlast. Welcome back to the Jeff Brown Show. We're live at Walk-Ons in the Purdue Memorial Union. Everyone needs a little playing time. You get into a game, and, and you've been on the coaching, I'm sure, a lot of these kind of games and, and playing a lot of these kinds of games. When you get into those ping-pong matches, those shootouts, like it looked like, and for a while it was in the second half, 
um, it, it puts a lot of pressure on your offense because they know that if you lose your serve, you may lose the game. But I thought the offense really responded, especially with six minutes left. You didn't give them the football back and give them a chance to go down again. No, I thought it was one of our better offensive games, and uh, our guys came ready to play, and uh, we did some good things, and uh, we played to the end, and we stepped up when we had to. We responded when the team needed the offense to respond, so I was very proud of them. They, they were, were able to gain a lot of yards and, and move the football and control the clock and, uh, you know, and play very efficient football. So hopefully we can build on that. Of course, uh, you know, when, as you're playing good defenses coming up, it's a little harder, but uh, I think we've – We've made some progress, and uh, we just got to continue to try to, you know, do all those things necessary. And I think trying to eliminate the turnovers, uh, the amount of penalties, uh, the negative plays, the, t the, the sacks, the negative yardage plays really helps us uh, be more efficient. You know, we've talked about some of the shortcomings of the defense on uh, Saturday night, but let's not forget you had some takeaways, and Clyde Washington came in. Uh, Samisi Fakasieki got a little nicked up in the first half, and Clyde came in and, and gave you an interception, and a big interception at the time because it did set up a score for you. Well, we think Clyde has a lot of potential. Uh, you know, it's just a matter of understanding uh, the system and being able to play fast. You know, when he in workouts and things like that, he's very athletic and fast, and sometimes it hasn't translated to the field, but as he plays more and more, he's getting more comfortable. Uh, he understands what we're trying to do. He's a really good size linebacker that we want to be dominant at some point. And uh, I think he's just got to continue to work at it and understand that, uh, you know, you got to study it. You got to be sharp. You got to know route combinations. You got to know what's going on on every play and what linemen are doing, pulling this way, pulling that way, where's the ball going, what's your back doing. And I just think that uh, the less he thinks and the harder he plays, uh, the better he does. Taking on a team, Jeff, on Saturday that uh, has beaten Purdue a lot of times in a row, and, and you always hesitate when you, when you go into streaks like this because a lot of your guys were in elementary school when this started. They have no concept of how long it's been since Purdue beat Wisconsin, but the fans know, and we have to have something on Saturdays to talk about, so we'll talk about it a lot. Is it anything that you bring up or that the team brings up that uh, this streak has gone on a long time? Well, we brought it up multiple times, and uh, not only has it gone on, but it's gone on since I've been here as well, so... They have our number, uh, probably three of the five games we played against them. Not only did we get beat, but it was a butt kicking, including last year. Uh, so it proves that this is a really good football team. And I think they've always prided themselves on tremendous defense. They're big up front. You know, they're physical. They get turnovers. They can run the football, control the clock, and uh, limit the possessions. And those are always tough teams to play against, especially when you have a lot of talent. But this is a well-coached team. Uh, you can say what you want, but they have talent. They have a good running back and quarterback and uh, really good defensive players, and they have a great scheme. So without question, going on the road uh, into this environment, we're really going to have to play efficient football, keep this thing close, and find a way to win in the end, just like we've been able to do the last couple of weeks. But it's going to take a, a great effort by our team. You know, I asked you last week if there was a difference that you saw with the interim coach, Mickey Joseph, taking over for Scott Frost. Now, Jim Leonard's only been the head coach for two weeks uh, taking over for Paul Chris. Do you see any difference at all offensively or defensively with this team? Well, I think the thing you see defensively, they haven't changed. You know, Coach Leonard calls the defense. He, he always has. Uh, the scheme is really, really good. Uh, it's really efficient. He, he gets it. He understands it. They put a lot of pressure on the offense. So that hasn't changed one bit. I think offensively, you know, they're still going to do what they do, uh, but they have slightly opened up uh, the playbook a little bit. They've been slightly more aggressive on first and second down, allowing their quarterback to throw the football to try to open up the running game. And, uh, you know, I, th I think it's helped them. And obviously they didn't win last week like they wanted, but uh, you know what? They really had a big win against Northwestern where it was dominant. I mean, it wasn't even close. Uh, and this is a good football team. So you, you, you know that they're going to play hard. You know that they're going to try to help. Uh, they're a football team win. They have a lot of pride. They know how to win. Uh, they've done it. Uh, so, like I said, it'll be a, a, a tough challenge. All right, we're going to give the coach a quick break. When we come back, we'll hear from Devin Mockaby. It is the Jeff Brom Show, presented by the Roman Automotive Group on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. Great story. Walk on, running back. He starts to O'Connell's right. And here is Mockaby, the man known as Crazy Legs. Good start for Mockaby. Lowers that helmet and pops his way across the 40. Second drive from the 20. O'Connell will roll, checks it down. There's Mockaby, cuts back. 
Maccabee slips away. Here he goes. And Maccabee finally brought down across the 35-yard line. You know, flipped his commitment to play here at Purdue, and that was his dream all along was to be here. And he's a walk-on and having a great season. Now he takes the toss. More room for Maccabee across midfield. And then his shoulder down hard at the 45-yard line. Tonight, third and goal, empty backfield, O'Connell. Over the middle, zips it towards the back of the end zone. That's caught for a touchdown by T.J. Sheffield. To Sheffield. Purdue on the board first. The guy can get to him is on the front side, and he beats that. Balls out, Thompson pressured, and inside the 15-yard line, and it's recovered by Nebraska. He usually translates in the pocket. Purdue two out of two on third down. This is third and 12. They go back to oh. Jones. A back shoulder catch. Thompson pressured, and down he goes! O'Connell on the slant, throws a dart. Jones keeps his feet. Jones to the end zone. Touchdown, Purdue. O'Connell and Jones once again. 31 yard. Touch three timeouts. 5.41 to go until halftime. They fake it to Grant. Thompson rolling. Now throwing, and that's intercepted. It's picked off. Turn, Clyde Washington. It's Maccabee right side. Maccabee into the end zone. Touchdown, Purdue. Or that. Indiana. Maccabee into the end zone. Purdue adds on to his lead. We're back in 30 seconds. Important third down here. And that's Pat Sheffield. Sheffield spins free. Sheffield does. Touchdown, Purdue! To his running backs, and once again foul. T.J. Sheffield for the second time tonight. Slipped away once, twice, and found the end zone map for the second time. That's a great effort by Sheffield right there. Aiden O'Connell, I can't say enough about him. He's just been so accurate. The ball is going exactly where he wants it to be. They told me about this coming to this game. And I wanted to watch it. I watched it on film, and now I'm seeing it in person. O'Connell will throw, and that's oh, 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 and Jones. Touchdown, Purdue. What a pass. Anybody, he's eminently uh, covered, and look at this ball. It is time for the Pro Boilers feature where we look at how former Purdue student athletes are doing in their professional sports careers. Pro Boilers is presented by Indiana Kitchen Premium Pork Products. Get to know us at indianakitchen.com. Both our Pro Boilers and Indiana Kitchen are boiler made. Rondale Moore coming off an injury had six catches for 49 yards for Arizona in their loss to Seattle on Sunday. Dennis Kelly played for the Colts 70 snaps from scrimmage and four more on special teams. So Dennis still hanging around in the NFL, getting a good paycheck and playing for the Colts, and they won last week over Jacksonville. Raheem Mostert for the Miami Dolphins, 14 carries, 49 yards in the loss to Minnesota. Demarcus Mitchell for the New England Patriots had a special teams tackle in the win over Cleveland. And Xander Horvath for the Los Angeles Chargers had a reception in the win over Denver, and I had Xander last because he is a walk-on running back who came to Purdue and had success, and ho, oh, right next to me is Devin Mockaby, a walk-on running back who's come to Purdue and had success. Congratulations, by the way, Big Ten Freshman of the Week. That's a big honor. Thank you. Uh, some people know your path here from Boonville, but for those who don't, you were re ready to go to the Naval Academy. Talk how you went, instead of the Naval Academy, here to become a Boilermaker. Yeah, so after my uh, junior year of high school, and on my film, I, the, um, the summer going into my senior year, they had offered me, so I was committed to Navy for about a year. And then it was about two weeks before I was actually supposed to get to Annapolis. Um, Coach Barclay DM'd me on Twitter. And I always knew, I always keep saying this, but like ever since like my sophomore year when I came to a camp, um, I always feel like, felt like Purdue was like my dream school from then. So the moment I got that DM, I was already telling my mom like, man, I'm going to have to make the switch and just take my chances. So that's what I ended up doing. And it's not just because of the football program, but talk about your major here at Purdue. Yeah, the main thing was the schooling, of course. So I'm in a mechanical engineering degree, and that's what I plan to be doing after football ends and making good money. 
You had a pretty successful high school career uh, playing at Boonville, and you played against Gibson Southern a couple times where Brady Allen was the quarterback, and now, of course, he's with the Boilermakers. I saw you ran for 419 yards in one game. You didn't win the game. How is that possible? Yeah, so I ended up running for 419 yards and five touchdowns, but Brady just out threw us, ended up scoring six touchdowns, so it was just a shootout the whole game. Now, you told me you can't blame the defense because, actually, you were part of the defense that night too, right? Yep, I was playing both ways there you go. a little bit. Uh, talk about your path here then in, in terms of when you get to campus. You're, you're in the running back room. You're, obviously, you have to work your way up to the top. What, what has that climb been like for you, and, and how, how hard is it to be patient when you're going from the star of your high school team to coming in as a walk-on and having to prove yourself all over again? It definitely feels like a grind. I feel like everyone's in that same position right when they get that transition from high school to college, of course. But it was just coming in and making sure that I knew that I needed to work for anything that I wanted to get, so that's just what I've been doing. Uh, I've heard Coach Brom and others describe you. That you got a lot of nicknames. Crazy Legs is one. How would you describe your running style? Is Crazy Legs fair? Is that an accurate description? I've always said that Crazy Legs was very appropriate. I feel like the first time I actually heard Crazy Legs was back in high school once. Uh, ben Wolf, my running back coach back in high school, he used to call me Crazy Legs then, and then I also had mock train back in high school as well. Uh, it's instinct, isn't it? I mean, there are things that you, when you get the football in your hands and you guys got, got guys coming at you, you can, you can be schooled up and be trained, but some of it has to be just instinctive and in trying to not get killed by these big linebackers and linemen. I always talk about, like, every time that uh, the ball snaps and I get the ball in my hands, it just sort of feels like a, a little blackout where I don't really know what I'm doing in between. I'm just going and moving. Uh, you, this was before your time, but USC had a football coach named John McKay, and they asked him about his guys carrying the ball 30 or 40 times. He says, not a big deal. The ball's not heavy. Uh, how were you on the 30th carry on Saturday night compared to carry number one? Tired, <laughs> to say the least. I was, I was pretty tired, but I didn't, even, I didn't realize I had 30 carries till the next day. It didn't, didn't really feel like it added up to that much that day. How much have you heard from people, Devin, this week, maybe that you went to school with? I mean, I've got to believe that with the notoriety you've gotten here over the last couple of weeks, uh, your, your phone's got to be blowing up these oh, days. My phone's been blowing up constantly still. Like to this hour, people are hitting me up, DMing me, telling me how proud they are of me and just to keep going. Well, you're going to go into a great atmosphere on Saturday, Camp Randall Stadium. It's their homecoming, so you know it's going to be rocking. Good luck against the Badgers, and let's get those crazy legs in the end zone a few times. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right, when we come back, we're going to talk to Jack Sullivan. It's the Jeff Brom Show, presented by the Rorman Automotive Group on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. Great story, walk-on running back. He starts to O'Connell's right. And here is Maccabee, the man known as Crazy Legs. Good start for Maccabee. Lowers that helmet and powers his way across the 40. Second drive from the 20. O'Connell will roll, checks it down. There's Maccabee, cuts back. Maccabee slips away, here he goes. And Maccabee finally brought down across the 35-yard line. You know, flipped his commitment to play here at Purdue, and that was his dream all along was to be here. And he's a walk-on and having a great season. Now takes the toss. More room for Maccabee across midfield. And then his shoulder down hard at the 45-yard line. Tonight, third and goal, empty backfield, O'Connell. Over the middle, zips it towards the back of the end zone. That's caught for a touchdown by T.J. Sheffield. The guy that can get to him is on the front side, and he beats that. Balls out, Thompson pressured, and inside the 15-yard line, and it's recovered by Nebraska. He usually translates in the pocket. New two out of two on third down. This is third and 12. They go back to Jones, oh. a back shoulder catch. Thompson pressured, and... O'Connell on the slant, throws a dart, Jones keeps his feet, Jones to the end zone, touchdown Purdue. Three timeouts, 5.41 to go until halftime. The fake it to Grant, Thompson rolling, now throwing and it's intercepted. It's picked off on the return, Clyde Washington. It's Maccabee right side, Maccabee into the end zone, touch. Important third down here. And that's caught Sheffield. Sheffield spins free. Sheffield dives. Touchdown, Purdue. O'Connell will throw. And that's caught by Jones. Touchdown, Purdue. What a pass.
Back to the Jeff Brom Show. We're live at Walk-Ons in the Purdue Memorial Union, where it's always game day with a taste of Louisiana. The 2022 Purdue football season is presented by Purdue Global. Purdue Global is Purdue's accredited and affordable online solution for working adults. Persistence pays off at Purdue Global. Jack Sullivan's with us. Let's get a quick catch-up, though, on uh, Facebook to see where everybody's from tonight. Murrieta, California is checking in. Valparaiso, Indiana. Uh, Chesterton, Indiana. And DeMott, Cumberland, Indiana. Swamico, Wisconsin. And Clayton, Ohio. We'll get to the rest after we talk to Jack for a little bit. Uh, Jack is a, well, actually, you're a Purdue graduate. I already got your degree in August. Yes, so, first sir. of all, congratulations. Thank Welcome you very to much, the yeah. Alumni Corps. Uh, professional flight technology and aviation management. You're going to be a pilot. That's right. Yep. And you've already got a lot of, of flying hours under your belt. How, where, where did the interest in flying come? Uh, my grandpa actually built his own airplane. Um, so, when I was growing up, got to go up in that a lot. Um, so, that was kind of where that interest spurred from you know we talk all the time jack in in football about pressure uh talk about the pressure of flying an airplane and how maybe that helps you when you're out in the football field <laughs> dealing with that pressure um it's uh it's a lot different but uh you definitely feel like you want to get the plane back on the ground and land safely so um the pressure is definitely there and um you just rely on the training a lot like football um rely on what you're taught and uh, what you're trained to do so it's uh it's a lot kind of the same um, in that respect. You're not the first pilot that's been in the program. Markel Jones from Columbus, Indiana, went through the program here and actually has, I think, a pretty good job now, doesn't he? Yeah, I think he's working at um, Piedmont Airlines. I, I try to stay up with him um, when I get a chance. When, I, when he's around here, practice or some, and the games and stuff and talk to him. Um, but, yeah, he's, he went through the same program I'm going through. So um, it's good to talk to him and bounce some ideas off of him on, on my future after football. So. All right. Well, let's talk about football. What brought you to West Lafayette? Why were the Boilermakers a good fit for you coming out of high school? Um, I just thought it was the best spot for me to play a lot of football and uh, play at a high level. And I, I, I loved uh, the atmosphere at Purdue. I loved uh, Coach Brom and his staff and uh, it just felt right uh, when I came to visit. So. I uh, ended up coming here, and it's been, it's been great. One of the things we've seen, you have a knock for knocking down passes. You have seven pass breaks up, breakups in your career, which is really high for a defensive end. Six-five frame has to help, but what is it about your timing that allows you to get so many hands on passes? Uh, you know, this year it's been a lot of those uh, naked, naked passes from the quarterback rolls out, and you just get on his back pocket, and uh, if you can't get there, uh, you know, they're usually a little bit faster than me, so... <laughs> Um, if you can't get there, you get your hand up. Um, so it just happens. We work it all the time in practice, getting, getting your mirror hand up, and uh, it's paid off a couple times this year, so we'll keep that up. One of the things we've talked about on the show all season is the depth that this defensive line has, and you compare it to what you had five years ago. I mean, you can go sometimes three deep. has to help you as a player knowing that you can go full out for whatever you're going to get, 20, 30, 40 plays, and you know there's capable backups and, and other people that can come in when you're tired. Oh, yeah, it's definitely been uh, it's a big improvement from years prior, and it's, it's great to see everybody playing. You know, uh, you want to see your teammates out there uh, getting snaps too, so it's, it's great to share the love and – um, go out there and play as hard as you can for as long as you can. You know, it's been amazing, Jack, this year that every game other than the Indiana State game has gone literally down to the final minutes, uh, if not the final minute. As a football player, when you're in the middle of it, are you nervous on the field when, when you're in a tight game like that? No, it's kind of it's kind of weird because uh, me and Brantz were talking about that the other week. It was kind of like you kind of black out when you're in those moments and you don't really realize how big the moment is. And it's kind of weird because you think about like when you watch it on TV, you're like, damn, this is a, bit, this is a big moment. Yeah. So um, it's kind of different when you're on the field out there playing. You've played in some of the great atmospheres in college football, certainly the one we're going into on Saturday, Camp Randall Stadium. We know this. They have fun up there, mm -hmm. and the stadium's going to be rocking and rolling. Uh, how do you take that energy from the Badger fans and convert it into Boilermaker energy on Saturday? I think it's, uh, for defense, probably different than uh, the offensive side of the ball. You don't really have to deal with the noise. It's kind of kind of gives you energy. So any energy is good, any um, crowd noise is a good thing for the defense, so uh, we can take that and, and kind of pick it up like it's just us against the world almost. It's kind of how it feels out there when the, the crowd's against you. Let's go back a second to the post-football career. Ho however long you play, uh, at some point you're going to have to go out and, and work uh, outside of football. And, mm -hmm. and what's the path then to becoming a commercial pilot from this point? Um, so I'd probably have to instruct for a while, get my uh, hours that are required. I have about 200 right now, um, so you need 1,000 hours. Um, so I'll instruct for, for about a year or two and then um, head to the, to the airlines or to a cargo operator, um, whichever one I end up at. 
Well, Jack, we hope you make a couple of landings on the Badger quarterbacks on Saturday. Good luck against Wisconsin this week. Thank you so much. All right, we're going to have the head coach back with us. It's the Jeff Brom Show presented by the Rorman Automotive Group on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. Alonzo Corcellas blocked in the net again. Sorale is going to get it over. Hudson for the game. Purdue survives in Bloomington. A really impressive performance by her and the Boilermakers tonight. Down two sets to one, able to come back and get the win. Purdue got to start it off with this great look by Dunaway. Takes it on her left. Does a great job of keeping that on frame. Corner kick goal for Purdue. Duarte pounces on that second ball to find the equalizer. That's enough for Purdue to keep the golden boot in West Lafayette. Our Boilermakers have always been what unite us. To this hallowed field, we return each fall to be a part of something special. We've seen legends born and moments etched in time. away, Coleman fumble, and got it! Beasley rushes free for the Purdue touchdown! It's pandemonium, coach, hope the year! Hope we have a whole lot more of these. It's a great win for Purdue. For nearly a century, ross Stadium has been the home of Purdue football. As we forge ahead, we have a rare opportunity to fortify the legacy of future generations of faithful boys. Together, we will guarantee the passion you have for the old golden black. We'll endure for years to come. Let the carnage and the chaos continue. How about the Boilermakers? Boiler up, friends. The time is now. Automotive Group is supporting your Boilermakers as the presenting sponsor of the Jeff Brown Show and proud partner of Purdue Athletics, Warman Automotive Group, Boiler Up and Hammer Down. Let's catch up uh, what we've got on Facebook tonight. We've got Syracuse, New York, Texas, uh, Platte City, Missouri, Danville, Kentucky, West Palm Beach, Alaska checking in tonight, and West Lafayette. We've got our first caller, Daryl from Indianapolis. Go ahead, Daryl. Hey, Coach, how's it going? just want to uh, congratulate you on the win, as usual. I think it was another uh, team win. You know, uh, people don't realize how tough Nebraska is. They could have easily come into that game 6-1. and one. So, you know, every Big Ten team is tough, and that was close to a matchup game. Um, with uh, Wisconsin coming up, I would imagine that we're going to try to have the same um, strategy to get out really fast on them, and I'm very confident that um, this is a game that I think we can win. And I was wondering – with them looking at the film last week and probably going to try to take some uh, shots down the field, the difference is they're not going to have the speed on the edges. Uh, we're going to see some uh, inside screens and tight end delays, a lot of the uh, tight end delays this week to open up the uh, long pass. Well, yeah, I, first of all, I appreciate your call and all your support, and I can tell you you, you, you know this team very well. Um, every team's different, just like you said. Uh, this team is going to try to run the football, hit some play action off of it. Uh, they'll use the receiver some, but the tight end and running backs are a big part of this offense. The quarterback, you know, he's he's actually played a lot of football. He's a talented uh, young man, and, uh, you know, he's played well at times. And I think the more they open it up and allow him to play, he does a really good job. And, of course, defensively, they've always been outstanding, and, uh, you know, they still are. You know, they just happen to face an Ohio State team that uh, I don't know who, who would – uh, beat them right now. Uh, so that was their worst game. But, uh, shoot, uh, I thought Ohio State was going to score 100 on us. So, uh, you know, this is a good football team. When you go into their uh, environment, their home stadium, uh, we're going to have to play efficient, just like you said. I just think it's important that we, uh, you know, do our best to correct our mistakes every week. Uh, don't take anything for granted. Uh, work hard to get better. Of course, we know what we messed up on this past week, and we want to work hard to improve upon that and some of the other things that have happened throughout the season, like penalties and uh, you know unnecessary things that have hurt us and turnovers. So this is a, a critical game because it's the next one, and uh, if we can find a way to win, it would be a, a huge win for our football team. 
Well, we know that Jack and the rest of the defensive line are going to be dealing with Braylon Allen all day, one of the best runners in the Big Ten. Went over 2,000 career yards already, and he's a guy that can uh, really get it going when, they, when they've got the running game in gear. Well, last year, if this sums it up, uh, you know, they beat us pretty bad, and they threw the ball eight times. So they really don't need to throw it uh, when they have that running game going and when their defense is playing lights out. So that's why, of course, it's important that we play efficient football. We try to find a way to get some points early to – make them do a few things they're uncomfortable with, and that's when we normally have our most success, and uh, that's going to be the challenge. You know, you mentioned they, they throw the ball a lot to the tight ends and the running backs. It seems like Wisconsin, every time you play them, they're going to run at least one reverse, maybe a couple. They love to have misdirection to try to keep you off balance. Well, they've done a good job of that. They understand, uh, you know, they, they, they pride themselves on their big offensive line that's big and physical and a great running attack, and controlling the football and working it down the field. But, yes, they utilize all the speed sweeps and uh, all the different runs. Uh, they have a bunch of downhill runs to get yards. And it's just, uh, you know, something that uh, we're going to prepare for. Uh, you have to have an answer for different things uh, and different things uh, that they need to see because once they get going, that running game gets going, you better have a, a change up to figure out a way to stop it. Otherwise, you're just going to, you know, take a pounding a, a, a time after time after time. On the defensive side, Nick Herbig from them, an outside linebacker, leads the Big Ten in sacks, and he's a guy that you've got to account for offensively. Well, their strength's always been their linebackers, uh, and that's what they build their defense around. They, you know, they stand them up a lot on the edge, uh, in the box. They're going to bring them from all over on all their coverages, and that's what gives us problems because they're always bringing somebody different other than their D-line, dropping other guys out into coverage, into the passing lanes, which affects – what you normally would think would be open, and they're just very exotic in those things, uh, but yet they understand the package. And with that, their linebackers are always in position to make plays, and they've been very, very good. All right, we'll have the final segment of the Jeff Brom Show, presented by the Rorman Automotive Group. After this, it's the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. Toughest place in the Big Ten to come get a victory. You ask any player who's played here. Uh, Mackey is the loudest gym I've ever been in. Really, it's ridiculous. Like you just, you can't hear anything. Mackey Arena, it's, it's literally the loudest place that I've ever been in my life. Yeah, I'll, I'll take that to the grave. Mackey Arena is the hardest place to play. What can you say about this environment? The intro alone got me off my seat. This place could absolutely blow its top. This is the one venue where they have to have more of a read and react offense. This, this atmosphere is as good as there is in America. Maybe the best I've ever been in rivals anything I've ever seen. Here in the paint crew on both sides, enjoy what should be the best atmosphere you will see. Mona Lisa. A spot in the sand watching the sunset on the Corona Del Mar and a sold out Holloway Gymnasium, the three most beautiful things in the world, and we get to experience one of them right now. Holloway Gymnasium is one of the most electric places in entirely of NCAA volleyball, so we are so excited to be back. It's always great to see the pride that the Boilermakers bring to the gym and all the support that we get. Oh, double down. This entire Holloway gym right now doubling down and raving. Ellis the swing and the kill. Emma Ellis coming alive late in set number five. He's taking big swings right now, not afraid of this moment. The crowd really loves it. Getting the keys out. Middle. Purdue does it. They outlast. All right, the Boilermakers and Wisconsin Badgers coming up Saturday, 3.30 Eastern time kickoff. Our broadcast starts at 2.30. We have a question here, and I know the answer, but I'll ask it anyway. Do you have a preference on game times, early, <laughs> late, or in between? Well, you, you do know my answer. I, I love them all at noon. As early as we can play them, uh, I'm all for, so uh, that's my vote. Well, uh, this one's going to be, it looks like we're just looking at the weather forecast. They're calling right now for about 74 degrees in Madison on Saturday. Maybe a little bit breezy, so that could play a factor. But 
We've been up in Madison when the wind's blowing and the rain's blowing, and it's going to be a nice day for football, it looks like. Well, we've avoided all the cold games, and obviously we're not to that point yet, but anytime you can go up north to Minnesota and Wisconsin, good, good, good weather, it's definitely uh, much more enjoyable. It has been, Jeff, in October to remember. I will say somebody from Facebook, and, and we, you know, we're always looking for NIL deals for the kids. Um, Devin Mockaby, there's somebody's calling this Mocktober. We're going to rename the month <laughs> October. Uh, but it's been a great month so far. With three wins, and I think a lot of people thought as you looked at the schedule, three out of four games on the road, you've got a chance if you can win this week to sweep the month that everybody thought was going to be your toughest month of the season. Well, I think anytime you look at the schedule earlier as a fan, you, you, you base it on the year before, and I think this year is a lot different uh, across the conference, uh, especially on the West. There's a lot of really good football teams that maybe you didn't think would be playing at this level. Uh, and that's what makes it tough is it's just very competitive. Uh, you never know who's going to win, uh, whether you're at the top now or the bottom now. You can easily, that could easily change in a couple of weeks and you can go from the top to the bottom. So you just got to take care of your business every week. You got to you know, understand that whether you win or lose the week before, you got to figure out a way to win the next one. And that's just what college football is about now. And I know our players, that's why we have the one game mantra. And all we can do is prepare as hard as we can this week and go up there and try to cut it loose. You know, one guy we haven't talked about tonight, Charlie Jones had another big game for you with more than 100 yards receiving. I thought Charlie looked fresher on Saturday night than he's looked in the last couple of weeks. I agree. I think he did uh, feel fresher. We managed him very well last week, I thought. He got in just enough that uh, he was feeling good. And unfortunately, that's what we're going to have to do all, all year. He's definitely banged up again, um, but he's tough. Uh, he loves football. He loves to compete. And we're just going to try to you know, do our best part to get him as healthy as we can every game to hopefully get him out there to play at his highest level. I wonder, they always play jump around at the end of the third quarter at Camp Randall, and where we are in the press box, you can feel the thing sway, and you hope that the engineers have decided that it's safe. Can you feel that at all down in the field when they start jumping around? It's impressive, yeah. It is very impressive, and uh, it's one that uh, especially when they have it rocking and it's full and they're playing well, it, it rocks and shakes even more. Well, let's keep it quiet on Saturday. The quieter, the better. Uh, Jeff, great month so far. Good luck this week, and let's see if we can make it a clean sweep in October. Okay, and, and thank get, you. All right. Uh, the Boilermakers again taking on the Wisconsin Badgers on Saturday. It'll be a 3.30 Eastern time kickoff. 2.30 will be our broadcast start. We don't yet have a start time, by the way, for the Iowa game, which is November 5th. We won't probably find that out until next week or possibly the week after that. Purdue has four games left after the Wisconsin game, two of them at home, uh, including that November 5th game against the Iowa Hawkeyes. Our engineer tonight, Wes Scott, our producer, Jacob Smith, and video tonight presented by Hunter Massingill. We appreciate everybody's support with that. Again, no show next week because of the bye, so we'll be back here for the next Jeff Brown Show two weeks from tonight. We do have a Matt Painter show coming up on Halloween. For the head coach, for Jack Sullivan, for Devin Mockaby, this is Tim Newton. Tune in on Saturday, Boilermakers and the Badgers, and we'll see you next year two weeks from tonight on the Jeff Brown Show. Good night, everybody.